Hi all, welcome to Cal Foldcraft. I'm Cal. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how I built this dining table chair. So one of my main objectives today with this build was to show that joinery and cabinet making is open to all. So we've used a combination of different joinery techniques. We've used pocket holes and butt joints. We've also used half lap joints and we've used dovetail joints. So you can see we've gone through the whole range of joinery techniques just to prove that anyone can do it and we can, we can all have a good go at making something as lovely as this chair. Also today's build is part of a challenge what I set for lots of makers. Hopefully there's going to be loads of people taking part and if there is there'll be a playlist below with everybody else's videos and there should be some cracking builds out there. Mine's coming out on the Sunday and today's a Saturday and I already know there's lots of videos out with some brilliant builds. So don't forget to check out everybody's build video. If you enjoy the build, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment to all. What we're going to do next is then we're going to go straight onto the build and we're going to start off by milling the timber down. In this project there was tons of milling to do because all the timber was rough sawn. So I'm definitely going to cut it short for you, but we're going to show you a bit of the milling process and then we're going to crack on with the rest of the build. And this is where the project begins then guys and it's milling the timber up so we start off at the bench top planer and we get it squared up here on two sides before taking it over to the mitre saw to cut it down to its rough dimensions Once everything's cut down to its rough length, we then take it over to the table saw where we can finalise the squaring up of the boards. First of all, we make sure that the blade is at a perfect 90 degrees. We then finish up the milling process by running all the timbers through the table saw, ensuring everything is nice and square. Milling complete now to some fun bits, a bit of joinery. So we're going to have some half, lap, half lap joints and we're going to have some dovetail joints and I'm not sure what these are going to be yet. Probably butt joints. Should we put pocket or screws in to go with the dovetails? That's a nice mix, isn't it? Not sure yet, but we'll see. Uh, but I want to say a massive thank you to my friend Adam Day, who supplied me with lots of lovely pieces of hardwood uh, a while ago, and these have been sat in my shop waiting to be used, and they've come in really handy for this project. So thank you, Adam. Uh, also, and thank you for being a Patreon, Adam. Right, so we're gonna first thing we're gonna do then is we're gonna assemble the base of the frame. And for this joinery we're going to be using half lap joints. For the half lap joints we use referential measurements, taking the measurements directly off the piece of timber that we're going to be making the half lap joints on. I then find the centre of the piece of timber that we're going to cut the half lap joints in and then I can take that over to the table saw using the table saw jig to cut the half lap joints. When setting up the blade for the half lap joints, I ensure that the blade is just minus the line on the timber that we've marked out by a couple of millimetres. So then when you take it over to do the cross cut, which I'm doing now, then you can eat away at that line, nibbling up to it a little bit at a time, and this gives you a perfect half lap joint. Next we do a little bit of clean up with a chisel preparing the joints for gluing up. We're using standard PVA wood glue here and then we press the joints together making sure everything is square and then we fire a few brads in. I'm just doing this because I need to get on with this project. We could just clamp and leave overnight but I need to get cracking because I've only got a day or so left to the challenge starts. I wipe off any excess glue. I then get the track saw out and square up the ends removing any of the tenons what are overhanging. Two of the central pieces of timber of the seat are getting attached with pocket hole screws. So I'm just drilling the pocket hole screws here and then I'm going to glue and screw them into position. Using pocket hole screws is a super fast, easy, efficient way of doing joinery and it's really time saving. The only issue I have with it is the holes what it leaves behind but you can put these in areas where they can't be seen or you can fill them later. 
for the central piece of the seat then we're going to use a half lap dovetail and here you can see I'm just marking these out and then we're going to use the 10 inch to cut the first part of the half lap dovetail and then we're going to use the mitre gauge to remove the bottom portion of the half lap and then we're going to cut the dovetail on the bandsaw to cut the mortises for the dovetails first of all I use a mechanical pencil to mark around the dovetail onto the workpiece and then I use a chisel to score out these lines Next I use the router to take out the majority of the material in the dovetail mortises and I'm using a straight cut bit to do this. And then I use a chisel to clean up the joints. To secure the dovetails in position I apply plenty of glue into the mortises and then I hammer these into position using a soft mallet. There's no need for any nails or mechanical fixings on these as they're a really tight fit. So I squeeze them into position using some F clamps and then I can leave these for the evening. And there you go then guys, here it is the seat. And you can see there's quite a few different joining techniques in there and it's come together quite well. We won't have a, we won't have a good look at it because we'll have a good look at the end. We've also done the backrest which is more or less exactly the same apart from the dovetails have gone all the way to the end. And I'll show you that. There you go, here's the backrest then. There's a few more little things we just need to do to this. Rounding the corners over and such like that. But it's exactly the same as we built the bottom. It's just a replica, I didn't want to show you that twice. And we're about probably about 11 hours into the build now. We're going to go on to the building the framework. I've cut out all the milling of, of that part of the video because you don't want to see all that again. There's been so much milling in this video, so much sanding, but we're going to keep it to a minimum. We're going to sh I'm going to show you the diagram now of the legs and then we're going to move on to cutting the angles. I hope you can see this all right on the camera, guys. But if you look at this drawing here, which is a life-size drawing, we've got the seat here, the backrest coming up here. We've got... The back leg and then we've got the armrest, the front leg and then we've got a cross member here to keep all that secure from racking and, and splaying apart. And now we're going to move on to the cuts. So these again I think are going to be half lap joints. And all these cuts are at 10 degrees. So the top cut's at 10 degrees, the foot is at 10 degrees and all corresponding uh, cuts will be at 10 degrees. That's the great thing about when you do a frame like this, they always correspond together. I did the exact same when I built the rustic farmhouse table, but we only used pocket holes then, and now we're going to be using half laps. The initial 10 degree cut is made on the base frame of the chair. From there we can put these flush with the edge of the plywood which is square, and then we can mark out the remainder of the cuts. I mark out one cut, go over to the mitre saw, the table saw, make that cut, come back to the diagram, check everything's correct so then if I do make a mistake I can halt there before I carry on making more mistakes and solve the problem and then I go back, mark out again and then make the next cut. Here you can see I'm now marking out the half lap joints again using the same method as earlier. Here I'm cutting out the mortise for the supporting timber which is going to stop the whole frame from racking and as you can see I'm cutting this on the table saw and I'm just eating away at the material until the whole mortise is cut. If your joint's a little tight remember don't force it because hardwood splits really easily so all you need to do is go back over to the table saw nibble a little bit more timber away and then check fits. Don't forget you can always take timber away but you can't add timber so err on the side of caution. Next we're going to cut out the half lap joints and these are the half lap joints that are on a 10 degree angle. But I can still use the tendon jig for this, I just, used, I just need to ensure that these are clamped firmly in position and take the cuts nice and steadily. All these cuts have turned out really good so it's definitely a way you can do this although you could add a supporting piece of timber behind the weight piece clamped into position to offer a little bit more support. Well it happened to happen eventually didn't it guys? 
uh, a mistake. So I was meant to be cutting this mortise out here and I've cut it on the wrong direction there. 10 degrees that way instead of that way. So what I've done is I know it's straight away I've cut a piece of oak out in the in the same diameter as the care for the blade and then we've glued that in. That's ready to come out now and then we can cut that mortise and then this is the last piece to do. So hopefully that's the first and last mistake on this project. It'd be better if the grain was going in the same direction, but I think when that's sanded down and the finish is applied, you'll it'll be next to not visible unless you know, like we all do. And to finish off assembling the frame, we just glue and brad nail everything into position as we did before. This way we don't have to wait overnight for the glue to dry. We can crack straight on with the rest of the build. We're closing in on the finishing touches now. I'm just going to put a little round over on the end, edge of the seat here. Rounded corners, should I say. Look a little bit more sleeker and also stop you banging your knees on that sh really sharp edge there. I use the jigsaw to make these cuts and then I go over to the disc sander to refine them down to the final shape up to the pencil line. Oh, there goes a brad nail. We're at that stage of the build now where we get to assemble. Really exciting part and just fingers crossed everything goes to plan. And I also want to add a little bit of detail of a little round over on all the edges what are going to be touched by the hand. I'm a little bit unsure where the joints are going to cross at the minute on the frame and the seat. So we're going to wait to do that until it's assembled. So we're just going to assemble first. Clamp the seat firmly into position while I add the screws in from the rear of the seat. Make sure to pilot hold before adding the screws as again with hardwood this will split really easily so you definitely want a pilot hold. To attach the seat to the frame I first mark out from the diagram where it's going to go. A pilot hold and countersunk in the first frame and because these are symmetrical, these frames for the legs, we can clamp these together. And then we can drill through the same holes and then we'll have perfect alignment for when we put the chair together. Next I add a small chamfer of 45 degrees on the base of the frame. This just prevents any splitting or shattering of the feet when they're getting dragged around on the floor. To secure the seat to the legs, I pilot hole first and then I screw these into position. I can then later fill these screw holes with plugs. I then add a round over to anywhere where anybody's arms or fingers are going to be placed to make sure everything is nice and smooth to the touch. Next I go over to the drill press and I cut out some plugs with a plug cutter and then I can put these into position and then cut them flush with a Japanese flush cut saw. For the finish I'm going to be using some of this Wilco's Danish oil. Stop. 
stumbled at the start line I've done all that I can do But I'll try again I'll try again Stay on the straight and narrow We'll meet up at the end Cramped up on the inside At the thought of losing you But I'll try again I'll try again Stay on the straight and narrow We'll meet up at the end Bye.